Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a Mexican celebration that is a tribute to the afterlife, a day meant to honor those who have died and keep their memory alive. It's not like Halloween, which was historically a day to ward off evil spirits. This is a day of the dead, and it's more about paying respects to loved ones who have died. You don't have to be a certain culture. Anyone can do this, and there is no right or wrong way to make an altar or ofrenda, which is an offering. We place our loved ones' food or favorite objects. This is a way of remembering them and what they enjoyed in life. Traditionally, the marigold florals are used, but I'm using this today. Ofrendas can be made in several layers, but this is my version, and I don't think, like I said, that there's a right or wrong way to do it. It's celebrated November 1st. It's supposed to be Day of the Angels, meaning children's spirits, and the 2nd, November 2nd, is for all adult spirits. You could make it as early as October 31st. It is to celebrate life and a day of remembrance. The function of home altars or offerings to our relatives or the reason some people visit grave sites on Day of the Dead is precisely that of cementing bonds that links us to one another and therefore define each of us as human people. Isn't this a beautiful tablecloth? I only wish I would have bought it. It is so beautiful, but I didn't. And this was at Marshall's, by the way. Maybe for next year, I will try something like this. So friends, here we went to the Northgate Market and they had some cute little stuff for, they always have beautiful things here for Day of the Dead. Oh look, this is different. I don't think I've ever noticed that they have a six count of the small Day of the Dead bread and I loved it. I have this. Oh, look at her, how pretty. She's so beautiful. We had a ball with these ladies. <laughs> As you can see, my hubby was also having a ball with them. <laughs> Look at her! She's got some ass on her! Oh my god, it's some boobs. Well, I don't know where the boobs are. <laughs> that is so funny! Sorry if it's offensive, but that is just me, and this is a vlog that is totally about real life. So, there's that. <laughs> Hurry, she's gonna fall. They're so pretty. Look at their dresses. Oh my god. Oh yeah, because of the orange, huh? The orange. The orange. Thank you for picking. <laughs> you didn't pick her up by the ass. Oh, even the little one has a big ass. Look. <laughs> She's got a big rack on her. And then there's this one. Look at the little sugar skulls. Cutesy, cutesy. This one too? Oh, this one is too. Oh. This, or do you think they'll like individual? She cute. Fifty dollars. They have. Um, they're worth it. <laughs> it takes fifty dollars to make her holla. What? These are so nice too. They always have them so nice here. Look how nice everything is here. I like all these. How cool. Oh, this is a mini altar. Hakal? What? I think my mom lived in one of those. Is that what it is? How much are these? Oh, the ladies are $25. Yeah, they're $25. And the little mini altars are $15. So, yeah. I'm not sure. Those are $15 up there. And these are $12.99. And those big ones, they're not here. Well, I guess they're $24. Look at her. Oh, she's got a big 
booty too. You like big butts, honey? <laughs> you cannot lie. A table runner? That is so cool. Let me see. Ten ninety nine. Dancing couple, sixteen buckaroos, sixteen ninety nine. Oh my god, they totally look in love. They're in love. Look at these cute ones. Oh my gosh, how funny. They're so cute though. These are ten ninety nine. Not a bad deal. As we were at the cash register, I noticed these pants on this lady. They looked so cool, and she was like a very older lady. And we were like, oh, she looks like a Katrina. To which my hubby responded, yes, a dead one. <laughs> well, she's supposed to be dead, Cruiser. You old geezer. Look at my mom's cute little baby elephant skeleton. So now we begin the actual decor of my altar or ofrenda. And I'm starting with some of the items that I'll be using. I'll be using these two cake stands, which I love using all the time. And also these two little cupcake stands, which I think are beautiful. And then this cake stand here. And I love this beautiful little couple that I got. I got the male and the female. You'll see the, what I call the Katrina in a bit. I also grabbed some candy and some of the lollipop design in the form of the Day of the Dead Skulls. Also a little bit of salt and water. And I'll be using, of course, pictures, which is the most important. And of course, prayer is always the most important for this. And I have this queen skull that I bought recently and I wanted to use that alongside with the other skulls. So skulls just represents that we are human. We're going to be, you know, passing as well. And it's going to be part of life. It is part of life and it's not something to be feared. So that's what the skull represents. I'm going to be using some of these candles. I ended up not using the white ones, but I am using these black and white ones, which are very pretty. These are the ones that you saw me uh, looking at, and I purchased them from that market, Northgate Market Gonzalez, I think it's called, something like that, but they're very pretty. You could use religious items. In this case, I'm using my beautiful cross candle holders and i picked these up thrifting believe it or not many years ago and i just love using them all the time so here i also have faux food you, you don't have to use real food if you don't want to but i am using only that one because i didn't want to get cheeseburger for this video but anyway you're supposed to use marigolds but i'm using these lovely florals here as I said, I don't feel there's a right or wrong way to do this. I did take off my spidery webby, my spider web a uh, runner rather, or tablecloth. And I'm going to spray this down a little bit. Just says it's, it's a perfect time to clean when you're switching out decor. And that's what I did here. And then I'm going to place, it's not really a like a tablecloth. It's more like a curtain, I think it was. And so I'm not using it as a curtain anymore, but I'm going to use it here on this table because it's thick, it's white, and it is pretty shimmery. I don't think the camera picks it up, but it's shimmery and I love it. You guys know I love anything glam. And then these are pretty neutrals. I wanted to use florals that were pretty neutral. So I got two of those, two of these, and I thought I had two of these, but I'm gonna make it work with what I have. At first I thought about using them in a, ve in a vessel type of uh, container, but I decided to just lay them across the table here and just make like a little, like a little vignette if you will and you will see that these stems are so long and they tend to get in the way on either side so you will have to bend them so that you don't see them so much or that they're sticking up but in the end it doesn't really matter because you won't be able to see it much anyway so it doesn't really matter so here i'm just crisscrossing them and then since i only have one of the other two stems what i'm going to be doing is just placing them in the middle so that it could cover some of these long stems that you see here. I'm already folding some of these here and then I'm gonna put them towards the back with the florals towards the front. And you know, it does take a little bit of playing around. I have to admit, sometimes it could be a little difficult because 
the florals are not going the way you want them to go so you do have to work with bending them and also you want to bend the neck of the actual florals so that they kind of stick more towards the front and then they look like they're flowing naturally if you know what that what i mean but anyway I, it was releasing a lot of this the florals were releasing these little pieces of florals which i really don't care for which is sometimes that's why i buy the higher quality florals but in this case i wanted something simple so i picked up all these from the 99 but like i said they do discombobble so there's that so here i'm just gonna place these beautiful little cupcake stands or cake stands whatever they are i think they might be candle holders i'm not sure but in either case they're beautiful so beautiful you guys know when i sing i really love it so I'm going to intertwine those florals in between the little, I'm just going to kind of wedge them in between the little crystals that you see on the candle holder. And they are hard to do when you're doing this with one hand. So I did have to stop the camera a couple of times to make them stay. But these are very pliable, they're very workable. So that's the nice thing. And also remember that you're going to put more things in here. So it's going to pretty much cover everything and I did have to play around with them once again because once I placed that cupcake stand in the middle it ended up pushing the florals inside and you couldn't see them so you have to play around with that. I'm using my apothecary jar that I had here for Halloween. It is a beautiful clear glass beautiful vessel that you could use for anything and so I'm using it for chocolates. My, uh, several of my relatives love chocolate and candies and pastries and things like that so that's why i'm placing these things and also i place these two crosses that i have on top because that should be the first level so i only did like two levels which is what you see here i am going to fix the picture frame because it's falling to the back so i'm going to share what i'm going to do i took this piece i don't even know what it is like a little bottle that i use for halloween and i'm going to use it to make this picture frame stand because it wasn't standing and also what it had to do is actually rip off the back part of the picture frame so it would stay because it still kept falling off so some of these pictures may not all fit up there but you know i'm making them fit down below which i think is still okay and here's the part that i took from the back of the picture so it would fit and so this is um you know the way that i did it i know that a lot of you you know might want to do like the seven there's like a seven level or three levels but this is the way i wanted to do it this year and maybe perhaps in the future i'll try something more elaborate next time but i do have the salt here and then the glass of water as as well and then my beautiful katrina and katrina i guess i don't know what to call them but they're the fancy skeletons and i thought they were so very pretty and i think they're perfect i love the colors and you guys know i use those for halloween as well so they're like double duty here's a glass of water I didn't fill it all the way up but you could if you want to and then I have my little skeleton bracelet hand uh, on my hand as you see there and then I place those two skeletons and the queen skeleton and I'm using Dollar Tree candles these aren't very white on camera but they're more on the like cream color I guess I thought they were white but they're looking a little bit more cream which is fine as long as they're not other colors that's totally okay and that's the only thing I try to do is to make sure they're either white or cream color candles. Of course, the pictures and as I said before, the prayers is what's more important. So now I'm trying to fight with these florals and the picture frame so it doesn't fall. So now we're moving on to the goodies. So this is the Day of the Dead. We ended up picking up instead of the big piece that we used to pick, we got this six count, which sounds better to me because it's, you know, you can kind of moderate your pieces there. And I'm just going to place them here on these cloches that I have. And these are in the shape, I, I guess the round is, represents the skull and then it has the, the crossbones. And I thought that adding the two pinks and the two yellows would be perfect because it could give it a little bit of more color because as you could see, I'm going for more of the natural, the natural, not the neutral look for my colors. And so I wanted to add color with more of the food. So you could use like fruits or, you know, whatever it is you like to use that's in season or whatever your loved ones used to like. It's just a way of remembering them. I know there's like a saying out there that they come, that the, our loved ones will come in at night and eat the food, but that's not the case. They don't, they're now in a different dimension. They're not 
coming to eat the food if it is if they did then it would be gone by the morning but in either case it is a way to just remember what they liked and there was my grandma's picture i almost forgot her picture oh my goodness i had it in the chair it's like my poor grandma might she might she may be rolling it in her grave like they say she was a feisty lady but she was beautiful she i loved her to death and uh, literally what i do have a little bit of a dark humor so anyways so there she is and then i'm placing some of these little chocolates and i have some cookies because i think my aunt is not her picture i couldn't find it but you know it was to remember her too and she used to love cookies and cheeseburgers uh, for for a couple of these loved ones in here and i didn't like i said i didn't want to leave the cheeseburgers out here overnight and that's another tip i give you use clothes because you can enclose them while you have the food in there for a couple of days and now the last thing to do is to really just light the candles and enjoy this beautiful altar and the most important is of course the prayer so the pictures that I have placed here on the picture frame and on the side are the first one on the left if you're looking at the video from from I guess our left is my mother-in-law uh, and may she rest in peace all these left ones and both actually both pictures on either side is my mother-in-law my husband's mom and also his dad and then down below again looking from the left to right is his grandma the middle picture is his aunt and these are lovely people these were his relatives and are his relatives and also the two girls on the right side are my one of my best friends from childhood is the one on the right farther right and then the one the one next to her is jenny rivera she was a musical artist a singer and she passed away as well so it's great to honor her too because she was one of my favorite singers and then i have my cousin here he uh, i grew up with him i stayed with him and lived with him for a while in childhood and it's i just have precious memories of him as well as my grandma my grandma here she was the most beautiful beautiful lady i always remember having such a great time with her conversating with her and she would always tell me oh i look so old now in the picture i was like you look beautiful grandma and there's my mother-in-law's picture i took that picture when we went to mexico and i played a joke on her and she was sleeping and i took it while she was sleeping and <laughs> she's like i want to get you back but anyway this precious necklace that i have here with of pearls this represents my little girl since i don't have a picture as i did have an ectopic pregnancy back in 2005 um, that's my way of honoring her because her birthday would have been june 5th and so that is my honor and remembrance to her and may god keep her in his glory all these beautiful loved ones and like i said just do what you can with what you have and the most important you don't have to be elaborate you don't have to have a lot of decor just pictures a couple little items of food or objects and the prayer which is the most important the water is sort of a symbol of symbolizing baptism because that's what they use is water when we get baptized and the salt purifies so that's what the meaning of that is the salt in the sign of a cross has the meaning of purification and conservation because we use salt to you know conserve foods like meats and things like that so it's a kind of a symbol representative symbolizing that god conserves us and he keeps us and takes care of us until it's time for resurrection and the candles are representative that christ is the light of life i'm going to say a prayer for you guys at the end and it's a prayer that I picked up on the internet from the Catholic website and I loved it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm going to play the rest of this video with music and the prayer. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to live well, healthy, happy and organized. Many blessings and stay tuned for the next video. And may you have a beautiful, blessed day.
God of the living and the dead, today we remember our ancestors who have gone before us in death. Their lives added to the richness of ours. Their gifts were gifts to us. Grateful for the enduring treasures of our memories and mindful that our love and relationships continue into the next life. Draw us near to our ancestors in faith and love. Let us remember our loved ones with sweetness and happiness today and keep from our hearts the bitterness of our parting and replace it with the joy of anticipating eternal life with you and all your saints. Amen. Amen.